So we're live on Facebook and recording <laughs> and starting in one minute. <laughs> So nice to see you. Lovely to see you. Uh, can you say a few more things? I think maybe your audio isn't that good. I think that maybe I'm getting a reverb. Yeah, I think there's yeah. a problem. There, I am. Um, I closed my face. It's on, it's on my Facebook, but I've closed the page. I think it's it's better now. Great. Okay. So uh, welcome everybody um, to part 18, I think. Wow. Uh, <laughs> what makes our inner work work? Um, and uh, I'm really, really glad um, to, to be talking today with uh, the wonderful <laughs> Revital Shtayat. Uh, who's uh, both uh, an old friend, colleague, and so much more. Uh, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit uh, soon. And um, there will be time for questions and discussions in the end. You can also write in the chat here on Zoom. If you're watching on Facebook, we won't be able to uh, monitor that as well. So, so join us here on Zoom. You'll find the um, the links um, below uh, this uh, broadcast and in other places, and you're very welcome to join us. Uh, what I'd like to ask everybody here now is to really be uh, careful about staying muted. So uh, be careful not to become unmuted suddenly because it causes all sorts of technical difficulties. And now we will restart in a more formal way. So uh, welcome again to everybody here with us on Zoom. Uh, and welcome to those watching us on Facebook and to anyone who may be watching us in the future on YouTube or anywhere else. Um, and uh, welcome very, very much to Revital Shtayat. How are you? I'm good. I'm, uh, this is so lovely. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited. I, to be I started here. thinking about all the people in the future who will be seeing us. <laughs> yeah, I love saying that sentence. <laughs> so, um, Revital, just uh, as, a, as a beginning, uh, what are you up to nowadays? What are you doing? What are you planning? Courses? Uh, in, any interesting stuff going on? I am playing with um, one of my favorite topics, which is passion. Um, I, I think we'll go back to it when we get back to why inner work works. Um, because I, I look for ways to make inner work work and passion is one of them. Uh, so I am running a few workshops since it's just before the beginning of a new year. And I'm, I'm a sucker for new beginnings and um, important dates. Uh, I'm running a passion, a passion, Seeds of Passion workshop. Cool. In, <laughs> week in English at the end of the month. Um, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it because it's, a, it's an exceptional way to, to do inner work without really realizing how much inner work is being done. Oh, <laughs> nice. I, I look for shortcuts where we can find them. Uh -huh. um, and, and I am going to be starting soon an open, once a month open, open house for voice dialogue. Oh, great. The time has come. Yes, it has. <laughs> I, I will do, and the virtual world opens itself up to so many opportunities and so many possibilities that are really stress-free and effortless. So um, I'm going to be having a, a once a month open house, come and learn, come and do some work, uh, voice dialogue online. That sounds great. Yes. Great. Uh, and, and if people want to know about this, how, how do they find out about you? 
you know, how to contact you and stuff like that? What's Facebook the best is way? probably easy. Um, okay. Facebook with my exceptionally challenging name. Um, <laughs> there will not be two of me. <laughs> Yeah, so notice how it's spelled because it's yes. difficult. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but you can always find the uh, Revital through me as well. And uh, great. And you, what are you up to recently? Well, um, as usual, I have lots of plans. The, the next two ones uh, include one um, beginner's course uh, in which I, you know, I really, I, I've been teaching voice dialogue for more than two decades really and uh, uh, I kind of want to surprise myself and teach it in a different way somehow kind of uh, in, a, in a fresh way for myself as well um, so I decided that uh, uh, also since we we may be going into lockdown again and all that uh, to offer a short course a six six week course uh, six meeting course really uh, in which we can just uh, uh, learn and experience the, the the basics of voice dialogue and I think if people came to that and came to Revital once a month they'd get a really really good <laughs> you know package here and they uh, can really have a good start uh, doing this work and also uh, for people who who, who, who are already uh know a little bit about it but uh but want to f kind of refresh it or have become a bit rusty or you know so so both it's uh, always it's always wonderful to study with you you are really one of the greatest teachers that i've had the privilege to study with so thank you <laughs> always a joy to study with you highly thanks. recommend it thanks darling <laughs> i'm blushing so <laughs> <laughs> now the second thing I'm planning on um, is is kind of on the other side of the scale in a way and that is meant for it's a course a very advanced course uh, which is going to be for people who are already pretty proficient uh, and more than that uh, in voice dialogue uh, in which uh, I want to teach very advanced ways of working with um, voices or parts or selves, uh, uh, as we can interchangeably call them, uh, which are no longer really the classic voice dialogue. They're either uh, ways of transforming um, selves, uh, which can sometimes be quite miraculous, working with, uh, with selves from our uh, personal past, which we taught together uh, about two years ago. Uh, oh. And um, so I want to offer it to the advanced students to either learn for the first time or really make it their own so they can actually uh, use it uh, in their work as, uh, as uh, uh, facilitators and uh, coaches and things like that. And, and we will probably be doing some, some other stuff as well. So all this is happening with me and the series, of course. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I want to say before we delve into what makes our inner work work uh, from your point of view, and uh, maybe I'll have some stuff to add too. And uh, by the way, you're all welcome to, to, to add things in the chat. It would be great to, to hear what you have to say. Um, I want to, to say that I'm, I, I, with every year that passes, I am more amazed by how much healing is possible and how much transformation is possible, both for me personally, um, but also I see it with other people. But it happens usually if we really do the work. And the work can be, there are all sorts of ways of doing it, but we really need to invest time and effort, time and effort, time and effort, and then rest a little, and then time and effort and time and effort. Um, it's really, really worth it. So um, having said that, uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, I, I, I see that every teacher has uh, 
have the, each teacher I, I meet um, has uh, his or her very interesting and unique point of view. So what have you come up with? What, what makes it work for you, for your students, for your, uh, uh, the people you facilitate? Um, I think uh, before anything, you know, and this is a, this is a perfect setting, it, it's very difficult to move through uh, the levels of inner work that we're talking about alone. So there's something about creating connections mm -hmm. and creating deep, uh, meaningful connections with people that you know are there as your fellow travelers on this journey, which undoubtedly makes inner work work. Um, we are incapable, A, of doing everything on our own, and B, seeing what needs to be seen. We're all reflections of each other for each other. And rather than waste it and avoid people stay alone, try to do it myself, um, use it. Use it and use the reflections that we see around us in order to deepen the inner work and, and um, do it playfully. So I think that would be something that was um, not natural for me. I'm, I'm, I belong to the group that is quite happy to do everything on my own. <laughs> anybody, and I am a do-it-yourself kind of person. And whatever I can't do, I'll read and then I'll do. So this doesn't come naturally to me to say that, um, that it's, there are things that we cannot do alone. Um, and I think maybe attached to that is the, my, second, um, my second truth that uh, whatever we meet in life is an opportunity for inner work. There's no textbook called this is your inner work. There's life and life happens and it brings up all sorts of things mm -hmm. and whatever it brings up, both the very pleasurable and the very painful are opportunities for inner work. And sometimes we tend to see it as, um, you know, these, these accidents that happen to me these, uh, these uh, situations where I clash into somebody, the arguments that I have, the clashes, the, mm -hmm. and um, there's a quote by Byron Katie. She, she says that life doesn't happen to me, it happens for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that for me, that's, um, that's the sum of this aspect. I, I look at life as a potential playground for inner work. So whatever comes up, I look at it, I check to see what happens, and I use it to, to work with whatever comes up. Um, so so I, I also want to go back to what you said in the beginning. You, you spoke about the importance of doing it together. Let's go a bit more into that. Uh, you know, I, doing it together can be with, uh, with a therapist or a teacher can also be with friends, you know, what have you seen uh, that is so valuable about it? Um, yes, yes, and yes, the answers. <laughs> uh, I think that um, we, we, even, even the best of, the best of, uh, of uh, teachers or mentors, um, we, you know, everybody gets stuck in their head. At some point, everybody gets stuck in their head. And, um, and when, when, when there is that sense of going in a loop, it doesn't really matter who is there to, uh, to reflect it back, as long as it's someone, when it's, when it's of choice, somebody that you trust, that you know will listen beyond the words, will not try to fix you, but will allow you to just talk yourself through and reflect back again. And we, we need that external reflection once in a while. Not always, and again, 
at core, <laughs> I'm the DIY girl, but, um, but there are things that are uh, essential, sometimes more fun, but sometimes essential. We cannot do them on our own. We're not meant to do them on our own. I think part of the healing is learning that we were not meant to do this on our own. And it's a very deep healing to learn to trust people on that level, to um, move through life with an open heart on that level where you know that you are here as a reflection for someone else and vice versa. Mm. You know, it's always very interesting I, when, when I think about these things and hear what other people think. Uh, again and again, I notice how, for me, the, I don't really want to, to use the word truth, but the, the best way, the way that works best seems to be uh, uh, both this and that. So for example, if we say, yes, of course, it's wonderful and so important to, to find partners, whether they're more advanced than us or kind of uh, colleagues or peers of ours. Uh, and, and that's definitely really, really important and helpful, as you said. And on the other hand, and at the same time, I realize how important it is to be very um, independent on our journey so that we aren't too influenced by what other people think and say, whether they are the greatest teacher on earth or our husband or whoever it is. Um, so again, it's this uh, uh, fine line to, wow. to go between Absolutely. these two uh, uh, options. What, what else were you thinking about when, when I uh, invited you to, uh, to talk here? What, what else do you think makes our inner work work? And maybe what makes it not work? When I was, when I was thinking, um, I love the title of the series. I think it's a brilliant title because it's something that um, I think anybody who does any kind of inner work asks themselves, what makes any work work? What is going to make this work? Is this going to work? And if it does, then what's going to make it work? And what's going to make it work better? Um, yeah, because, because I, I so agree, because so many times we, we work, 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 and we don't see any result for a long time before we do. So I think um, maybe I will, I will represent... Uh, a different aspect from, uh, I, I had an opportunity to hear your, your uh, talk with Jeffrey this morning, and I heard that both of you started doing inner work at the age of 23. I, I would call my path, um, and you, you know this to a certain extent, the path of most resistance. <laughs> so I, I came into the second chapter of my life, my second career, um, believing that I've done my work, which was not a lot. I studied coaching after a long career in, um, in the film and, and, and TV industry. And um, I was ready to fix the world. I was going to teach people how to move from point A to point B. Um, very easy uh, because I have a lot of opinions and I have a lot of ideas how to do it. People come to me to ask me what I think. It seemed like a perfect, a perfect situation. And uh, I think all of that changed with, um, with the entrance of uh, Tim Kelly first and then you into my life. Uh, Tim Kelly bringing the idea of purpose, which was uh, an idea that came on fertile ground. Uh, purpose is a meaningful word for me. It is the raison d'être to me for doing inner work. It is in order to uh, fulfill my purpose in a greater and greater uh, scope and voice dialogue. And to both of these, I entered with somebody having to pull me by the hair <laughs> because I did not go with joy to either one. Um, both terrified me. Both seemed at the time 
unnecessary. And something in me pulled me and kept pulling me through the through the bumps and through the mountains that I that I reached and through the valleys that I that I fell into. Not valleys, the canyons. <laughs> um, so I think that for me, thinking about the levels of resistance that I have worked through over the last 12 years, 11 years that I've been doing this, um, that, that, uh, that cliche of what you resist persists is not a cliche, not for me. Mm. And to be able to turn my attention from resisting things to allowing myself to look into them to see what it is that I am resisting and to accept them, to open them up with a, with a lot of curiosity and to allow myself to, to see what's there, to see why the resistance is coming up, what it is that I'm, I'm pushing away and why, and accepting. So maybe one of the first things for me is that, um, that movement from resisting resistance <laughs> using it as a really powerful vehicle for me to notice what else is calling for my attention. We only resist the things that are really meaningful for us to discover in, in my, um, mm. in my uh, journey. It's, it's always been that way. The most, the most, um, intriguing discoveries, the most meaningful healing that I've had are in those areas where I've resisted. Mm -hmm. I um, don't know if it's that, if, if it's okay with you, but, uh, and it's absolutely fine if you, you, you don't want to go there, but is there any good example of that, that you really resisted something? <laughs> <laughs> you don't mean to go there. <laughs> oh, I've seen me in moments of great resistance. <laughs> Um, I, the, the, my greatest resistance for, for a long time was, um, was connection to higher guidance. Uh, yeah. um, I think that, uh, when, when the idea that there was higher guidance was planted in my consciousness originally by, by Tim, before then it was just not an option. Um, I fought it with every, every, everything that I had. Um, and, and if it wasn't so meaningful, I certainly wouldn't be here today, but I wouldn't be using it as I do as a very practical tool in my life. It's, it's, um, it's, it's a huge asset for me that I fought against, resisted, um, uh, repressed. Did, I, did, I did everything I could to not have to deal with the fact that there was this possibility, there was this, um, uh, there was this energy that I could be harnessing um, that is a, a hugely meaningful part of my life today. But had we had this conversation 11 years ago, I probably would have left the room by now. Oh, really? <laughs> um, so that would be my ultimate example. Mm -hmm. and, and everything else, including voice dialogue, which um, I heard about it, and I heard about you, and I read about it, of course, because if I could do it myself, then even better. Um, and I said, no way. No way. I'm not. This is just not for me. And it's dangerous, and it's risky, and it's irresponsible. And I'm not, I'm not doing this. <laughs> but um, thank goodness I learned to listen to my resistance. Thank goodness indeed, because, you know, because of that, you've become who you are today and uh, a friend and a colleague for me. And we can swap ideas and help each other. So, so this kind of ties into what you said in the beginning, the importance of... Uh, of uh, 
various forms of togetherness on the journey, which are so helpful for all of us. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, you give your hand to somebody and they become somebody who can give a hand to you when you need it. It's quite beautiful. It is. And, um, and I think maybe um, what you're saying now with, with that lovely little laugh of yours is another thing that for me is, um, is essential in inner work, which is a little bit of a sense of humor. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> we take ourselves so seriously. And for good reason. I mean, it's a good reason. But um, ultimately, I think we're also here to have fun and to enjoy life. And inner work in that same token should also be, not always, and, and sometimes it is, ter it's terribly painful. And it brings up um, so much pain but to remind ourselves alongside it that there is, um, there is, I always say to people, you know, add, add just a pinch of humor. Add a little bit of, add a little bit of that, um, of that, um, looking, at, looking at ourselves not so seriously, um, and yet very seriously. But, but having that smile alongside everything else um, does a world of wonder for me. I, I, I don't know how it is for you, but for me... Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. And, uh, yeah, and I, in our conversations as well, we, a lot of it is really funny. It's, it's, um, and even if it's not funny, it's funny. And sometimes it's not. But, but to remember that... Uh, is, is very important for me. Um, another thing is, um, so maybe I'll, I'll go with that idea of when I first started with my coaching, um, I came in with the notion that I'm, I have to fix things. There are things to be fixed. Uh, there is the optimal, there is that perfection, and I'm there both for myself and for others to just slowly make my way towards it. And when we will reach that plane of perfection, life will be good. Um, so in, in, in that belief, in that paradigm, I had to take apart many things in order to make inner work work for me. Um, I had to release the idea that there was an ideal, that place where we're meant to go. I had to release the idea that things need to be fixed. That was a very hard one, by the way. <laughs> um, it, it took quite a bit of inner work to release the idea that we are not perfect as we are. Um, that all of this is just a journey with um, deeper and deeper levels of expansion, but it's not because anything here needs to be fixed. And I had to let go, or at least bring down the volume of the inner critic. Um, inner work and inner critic <laughs> do not go together. Um, <laughs> And they'd like to. The inner critic rises up and says, but you didn't do enough inner work. And you, you need to just do something and you need to just fix that. No, no. It's a part. It's a wonderful part. It's a very, very important voice in our head. But when we listen to that voice as we're doing inner work, that is basically the epitome of <laughs> not not that doesn't make inner work work absolutely <laughs> and so, the critic, I, I know <laughs> i also had a huge critic huge 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 critic devastatingly huge 
they can really be they can really transform these critics and become uh, quite friendly and very helpful and all sorts of very neat things. Uh, so for example, if you're doing your inner work and suddenly you feel the critic rising up or another uh, inner part that wants you to be absolutely fixed and perfect and stuff like that, what do you do? Um. First of all, I, I recognize the fact that I'm doing meaningful work because by now my inner critic jumps up mainly when we're stepping on, on a dangerous ground, which means either something new or something very deep. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I already know to, to recognize the fact that we are treading on, on um, holy ground. <laughs> and, um, and if it's if it's not loud enough, then I ask him to to move aside, and I'll say then I'll come back later. But if it is a very strong uh, presence, then I'll stop whatever I'm doing, and I will invite my inner critic for uh, a cup of coffee, and I will ask him, inner critic, what seems to be the issue? I can see that you're very concerned, and that there's something that has um, triggered you what happens and we have a conversation about what it is in this particular situation that um that made him erupt as he did and and it's, it's, sorry and i'm just saying it's always when when we know to make that pause to not to not let ourselves be led into a path of self-criticism but to sort of stop for a minute say oh it, it's not me it's my inner critic there's something so phenomenal because then i allow myself to actually see what is happening rather than uh chip into what's happening according to whatever my inner critic is saying mm. Mm -hmm. but i would love to hear your example because you are one of the people with the least um the least vicious inner critic now. I mean, in, in these, you know, since I've known you. And what has made, how did you manage to get to that point? Um, well, you know, it's it's been a very long time since my inner critic was really kind of uh, vicious and active in any sort of way. And yet, if he does appear, for a brief second, it's usually just as you said, when he's worried about something. So if I meet him at all in, in, the, in a form that is a bit kind of uh, um, uh, difficult to, to be with or uh, that uh, uh, eats at my self-confidence or something like that, then it would usually be because I'm planning something new or I'm going through a really, really important transformation. He won't necessarily come, but if he does come, it will be something like that. And again, this is connected to something real, that's really, really important to, to remember when we are doing our inner work, whether uh, through voice dialogue or any other way. And that is that we usually find that uh, that the inner critics and uh, and and uh, similar voices uh, uh, are actually down down deep below. They're usually worried about something, so that really helps us uh, relate to them in a different way, because they can be very very vicious, yes, and frightening and horrible in so many ways. But if I remember that there is a good chance that deep inside this guy inner guy is actually worried for me and he's trying to help me in a way that doesn't help at all but the there's this there then i can relate to what is really going on and not to what is seemingly going on exactly uh, so when he says you're you're stupid and say ah must be worried about something let's talk about that just as you said a few moments ago and that's really helpful yeah. now what i remember uh from days when my inner critic really thought i was worth than nothing really um is that first of all 
when I had the very, very good luck to, to get to know about voice dialogue, I very quickly realized that what works is to accept everything as it is, first of all. So that was really helpful for me because I, I realized very early on that that worked. So I don't need to fight with him, even if it sometimes can be really, really, really difficult not to go, get into a fight with somebody who says you're stupid and you'll, you'll never be anything or you're worth nothing or things like that. Um, and then I, I realized that um, if I talked with him enough, uh, then little by little there became, a, a, there, there appeared a, a sort of relationship with him. And little by little what he said did not sound like the absolute truth about me, but an opinion or a point of view or something like that of a character that has a certain character. So he really knows how to be critical. That's what he does. That's what he knows to do at this point. And he does it really well. And he does it extremely well. And, and I can even be amazed and awed by how good he is at doing when he does it. And then he really, he likes, you know, he likes feeling that he, he's impressive and he is. <laughs> so, uh, so that kind of constitutes a relationship where we're not fighting, but I can at least once in a while say, wow, you're so good at what you do. And I really, I can, I can see that and I can appreciate it even though you're killing me, you know? Uh, so that's one way that uh, it can go. And then little by little, the critic, as so many other um, inner selves, can really become an ally. Yes. I swear to you, it can happen. <laughs> and, and, you know, or he can be kind of sleeping most of the time and just kind of uh, wake up when things are, seem worrying to him. Yeah. So, so I, I had the same experience. Yes. Um, not, not, I mean, we haven't gotten to the sleeping stage yet, but um, <laughs> cer certainly, um, certainly a, a little vacation somewhere once in a while. Mm, good. <laughs> and, uh, and you, you know, it's also, um, we're so identified with, with the inner voices like the critic. So as I said before, it sounds like the truth. And the moment he becomes a part exactly. and not me or God saying it or whatever, then, you know, it's, it, it, their humor can get in, as you said before, because it's, it can be quite funny, hilarious sometimes. You know, for example, do you remember times when the critic can say something like, uh, uh, I, really, uh, I really think you should, uh, I don't know what, you should... Uh, uh, buy much better clothes than you're wearing or something like that. And then you go and buy a really good, very expensive dress or something and says, what, you know, <laughs> you're spending so much money, you know, or something. So you, you can't escape him. And then you, <laughs> humor kicks in and you get to understand that this is what he does, whatever you do. And then you separate from him not in a distancing way, but in, in a way that says, okay, there's me in my aware eye, and there's a part of me that has a, a very uh, interesting way of seeing me and seeing things, and, uh, and it's fine, no need to fix him, but let's, uh, let's talk some more, <laughs> something like that. And it works. And we're looking for ways to make inner work work. Yes. That works. Yes. And if you don't work with inner selves and you find a different way of doing the work with, with, with your criticism, realizing that it isn't the truth, but it's a valid point of view, then that might work as well. Yeah. 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 Any other things that you wanted to, to add to, to this thing from your experience? Um, I think, you know, for, for those who are, um, who, who, who know voice dialogue, uh, 
for me, the, the self-aware ego, the aware ego process. And uh, for those who aren't, um, it, is a state, it is a state of being where, as you said earlier, I'm not identified with any particular thing. And part of that ability to be unidentified, um, maybe the closest, the closest emotion to it is to approach everything with passionate curiosity. Mm. Um, if everything is interesting, and if I don't have an agenda about anything, um, including a part like an inner critic, or, you know, you know, we could go even, even more extreme to the annihilator, to parts that are, to voices in our head that are, um, that are cruel. Um, if we can approach everything with an almost childlike curiosity, an unknowingness is the closest that I can call it. And to just explore, always explore what it is that's coming up it allows for things to be what they really are and not what i've bit grown accustomed to thinking that they are i remember once there was a movie called the labyrinth with david bowie and he said things are never as they seem <laughs> and i remember as a child thinking "Ooh, that's a good sentence and things are really not as they seem and i think the more inner work that i do the more often I realize that things are really not as they seem. Things that we think are really, really, really good, we discover have a hugely harmful effect on us. And things that we thought were, were devastating or terrible, we discover that in the end were the best thing that could have happened to us. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's just as a, as a generalization, but there's something about approaching Life in general, I think, but ourselves with a sense of um, of awe, almost, of complete curiosity and an unknowingness where we allow ourselves to be what we really are, rather than what we've become used to thinking we are, what the world has told us that we are, um, what people who want to fix us will tell us that we are, it's a, it's a very different experience. So unknowing is, um, is something that I practice uh, regularly. And this is again, coming from somebody who has very, a very strong part that likes to know. Um, all, all knows that I have parts <laughs> that need to know. I, I need to know things. Um, for years, I called Google one of my good friends. I mean, I, I, I like facts. I like to know. And yet with inner work, the more I teach myself to unknow, both for myself and for others, the, the inner work is by far more valuable, more precious, um, more significant than, uh, than when we come knowing what is going to be, knowing what needs to be done. Mm, and uh, what the problem is. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. So uh, true. Yeah. Now, uh, somebody wrote a, a question. Yeah, I, was going, I was going to answer her. Um, right. so can, first can you, of all, would you like to translate it? I can. Um, Sally asked, she said she has a very basic question. Um, and it always is the place. So thank you for asking. Um, we all say we're talking about inner work working and according is it according to what we decide that it is is it according to the feeling of relief um is that is that the ultimate goal to feel to feel better uh does it have another meaning besides that uh um that that lightness or that sense of uh of expansion that we feel in life and what are we actually looking for um, in this thing that we call inner work. Would that be a good translation? I think we got Yeah, I think it's a great question. So it's a great question and this is absolutely the place. And I think um, the one, the, my one level of answering is from a place of unknowing. And 
I don't know. I, I, I honestly do not know what your reason, what anyone's reason for doing inner work is. I think we all have different ideas and each one is absolutely fine. I think it, it is essential to know, um, at least uh, as a starting point, why we're doing what we're doing. But it's so individual. It's so, um, it changes with time. Why, when I started doing inner work 11 or 12 years ago, um, I set out to be a better person. I used to have, just before uh, Yom Kippur, which is a Jewish mm -hmm. holiday, I used to have my list of all the things that I wish I was better at. I wanted to be a better partner, a better mother, a better daughter, a better friend, a better, I wanted to be a better person. So my first um, movement into doing better inner work, better work, is, <laughs> um, it, it is, it's changed its shape over the years. Um, for me, absolutely one of my, one of the reasons um, that I do inner work, apart from the fact that for me, it's, um, it's an incredible adventure. Uh, it's a constant, it's a constant opportunity to know more and more of me. And if I know more and more of me, I know more and more of the world around me. But it also gives me joy. Um, in the moments uh, when I've gone into a place of pain and come out the other end, it gives me a, a great sense of expansion of, of lightness. I think, um, you know, oh, maybe we'll end. I have one more thing, and then I'll, I'd love to hear from you about, um, about your experience of what is possible, uh, the, the quality of life that's possible when that we've done extensive inner work, the right kinds of inner work, the respectful, um, the, the attentive, the sensitive, uh, the very reverberating kind of inner work, I think the quality of life shifts. But it's, it's so personal. I, I do think it's important to know why we do what we do. But each one of us has it, their own answer, and it changes. Um, for me, by the way, one of the reasons I was saying earlier about passion, using passion or purpose, and I use them both, um, are reasons to do inner work. We don't normally volunteer to delve in deep and go to those murky waters and, and do healing, but we do volunteer to find our purpose. We do volunteer to discover our passions. We do volunteer to look for the carrot and as far as I'm concerned, it's a great excuse to do inner work. <laughs> so there's always this and that. Um, mm. And maybe, maybe the final thing, I could probably be talking about this for 24 hours, I think, but I won't. <laughs> the final thing I'll say now, is I think that um, what, make, what made my inner work work was the understanding that I have at every point in time freedom of choice. I get to choose. I get to choose if I do my inner work. I get to choose if I want to be viciously angry at somebody, know that I'm angry, know that it's a part of me that's angry, know that I'm completely unaligned, know that I should be doing inner work, I could be doing inner work, but I choose to be angry, it is fine. <laughs> it's a freedom of choice. I know that I could be um, following uh, higher guidance. I could be doing things, but I have the freedom to choose at any given moment what I do, which calls for a great sense of responsibility. I am responsible for my choices. And the minute that I know that, 
the minute that I know that all of this is a, a journey in order to bring me closer and closer to that sense of freedom, to just listening to what's right for me, to moving forward according to what is more, most accurate for me, to being respectful of my feelings, of my rhythm, of where I am. Freedom of choice sometimes means I'm stuck and I know I'm stuck and I choose to be stuck because right now stuck serves me well. Um, feeling weak is the best thing that I could be feeling right now. Feeling um, uh, despair, feeling, uh, feeling rage, feel whatever it is that I'm feeling, when I'm doing it from a conscious perspective, when I not, and when I'm not only identified with the emotion, but when I know that I'm feeling what I'm feeling, and I'm choosing, I have the freedom to choose whether to stay there or to explore it from an aware ego, that freedom for me um, gave me a lot of air in my wings to continue moving along this journey. Hmm. Thank so, you. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll end with freedom of choice. But, you know, we, we speak a lot about, um, about if it's okay to ask you what you're experiencing now, um, which is almost like a new quality of being. That's and true. If yeah. you feel like talking about it a little bit, I think everybody would benefit. Wow. <laughs> it, that's a bit challenging for me, I must say, because uh, some things are so difficult to, to talk about. For example, if I say that um, I feel such a transformation uh, in me that um, for example right now it's as if my whole body is in a very is empty in a very delicious way or I don't know if empty is exactly the word, but uh, um, it's like very uh, transparent, as if it's made out of a very, very transparent, but very, very strong material. You know, so what does it mean to people when, when they hear that? I don't know, uh, but I can say that it's amazing to feel this way. Um, and the the amount of um, uh, well being that comes with it and uh, sensations of uh, of freedom are are much more than I knew before. Um, so what I see is that in the beginning, of course, you have things that aren't working for you that you're you're suffering from, uh, and not only in the beginning, it's really part of life and it's absolutely natural. And, and we always have things that are difficult in our lives. You know, it's as, as long as we're uh, here, uh, uh, humans in a body, uh, in matter, uh, things aren't always easy. Uh, so, so some of the work really is uh, to to heal something that gives me pain, you know, uh, or, or something that doesn't work. A person really wants a relationship but doesn't find one or uh, quarrels with your daughter or it can be anything. Uh, so that's one thing that makes you want to do the inner work sometimes. Uh, and also, uh, uh, Sari, uh, makes you more able to monitor if anything is changing. See, uh, uh, perhaps at some point uh, your relationship with your daughter is becoming better. So that's usually a good indicator that your inner work is probably working. 
But if it isn't working uh, for a long time and the, the relationship doesn't change, maybe there's something that's, that needs to be changed. So that's kind of one thing. But the other thing that for me was there from a very, very early stage, uh, and I was also quite influenced by uh, uh, the Jungian point of view, and that was that I understood that we could feel whole and complete. And that's like anything else, that's a process. You get to know more and more parts of yourself and you get to accept more and more parts of yourself and you get to disidentify with more and more of yourself. And all this together uh, creates a sensation that can be, you know, uh, can come and go, but can develop very, very much as you do more and more work over the years. You can feel more and more complete and whole, not perfect. We're not talking about perfection in any way, shape or form. But there is such a feeling. And the more you do the work, you may experience that. And that also tells you, ah, the work is working. I feel more complete. I feel less lacking and less holes in me. It also usually um, uh, means that I would be, in general, less judgmental. It doesn't mean that I think that everything is good in the world or in myself, but the level of uh, uh, the ability to accept things as they are and work from there shifts. So it wouldn't be fixing. It would be everything is okay right now, even if it's horrible, <laughs> you know, and now let's see what we can do. So, so this is another thing that comes with wholeness, this ability to accept more and more in me and thus in the world in general. And then one may discover that the process can, if we choose to, and we have free choice, uh, it can move forward in very, very fascinating ways. And some of them are ways that, for me, in my experience, I, I've never read about them or heard about them. Maybe I didn't read the right books. And if I did, maybe I would find it. But, you know, the... I learned that if I just continue and do the work and do the work and do the work and do the work, the, the process has its own um, natural evolution, I would say, or natural growth pattern even, and that I can trust it. And the more I trust it, the more I make it possible for myself to find out what more is possible for a human being to, to experience in this life. That's really cool to realize that you can, you know, shift and change and, and, and transform and heal. And, um, you know, and that the, the experience of living can be so many things and so much better than we were ever told, really. Now, since nobody tells us this, then we don't use that as well as a kind of, a, a, I don't know, lighthouse or something that calls yes. us. It says, it's okay if I stay like I am, but I know that there are more possibilities and I'm willing to allow them to emerge. So of course, a lot of our work in the beginning and not only in the beginning, in the middle and in the end too, has to do with things that aren't working, but that's really only part of it. The other side of this wonderful equation in a way is that so much is possible and the experience can be so much better in so many ways. And when it happens like that, then you find also that you can do more. So if you're, you want to do something in the world, you have a better chance of, of doing it perhaps better, hopefully better, and causing less harm on the way. 
So that's also another cool thing that can happen, uh, hopefully, at least. <laughs> so sorry, I hope we, we, we answered you to some extent. Um, anybody want to, to ask anything else? It can be either in writing or in English with your voice or even voice in picture, if you like. Uh, we're nearing the end of our meeting, but we're open to questions, comments, suggestions. And meanwhile, while people think, uh, Revital, do you have anything more that you want to, to say, suggest? Um, I think I wanted to... to sort of move with what you said and um, and uh, remind us that there is something, you know, there is an importance of, of sharing, of talking about what it is that you're going through. I remember the first time that you told me that your inner critic wasn't, wasn't you know, was, you could sometimes go to sleep and I, and I it was a thought suddenly you know, that as you're doing the work, you don't really think of all the possibilities. Mm -hmm. So there is something about getting inspiration from what is possible. And I'm not talking about, you know, the, the posters for success. I'm talking about these moments of what is possible when I do do the inner work. What does it mean to feel whole? What does it actually mean? We, we don't really think that we want it. We yearn for it maybe, but we don't actually allow ourselves to start imagining what would that mean? What would it mean if I wasn't identified with an inner skeptic or an inner critic or, um, or a, very, a, a very hurt child? What, what would be possible? And just to be in that, what would be possible realm? Um, so you, you know, with, with you sharing what it is that it might feel like, uh, it plants seeds in the imagination of what is possible. And the other thing, uh, and, and that'll be the last is that, um, you know, there's so many other things that are the transform. We have ways of measuring. We know when something changes. When our bank account changes, we can see it in the numbers. When our when when our our child grows, we see it in those. We we can see change. We're not accustomed to seeing inner work work, and we get quite gregarious. We we something changes, so we immediately want the next thing. And oh, so now I can do this. Oh, but that's nothing. Now I want to do that. And we forget to stop and celebrate our achievements. Mm -hmm. And there's something about those moments of realizing that you were able to do something internally, emotionally, that a day ago, a week ago, a year ago, you were incapable of doing to stop and recognize and appreciate and celebrate that inner achievement. Um, for me, un Undoubtedly, is one of the things that have made my inner work work. I believe in celebrations. I like them. Um, inner parts of me who wonder why we do what we do sometimes need them, need that moment of recognition of saying, oh, well done to me. Wow, I just, I just made a mountain melt by just saying to somebody, no, I don't think so. <laughs> and, and stopping there and recognizing it and recognizing ourselves for what we do. I mean, with inner work, people aren't going to be standing outside going, well done, well done. They don't know. So it's our job to stop and say, well done. And, and, and wow. How incredible to be a little more whole today. So that's, that's me. I agree with you so much. You know, sometimes uh, 
Me too. I, I, I sometimes forget the, the, the huge amount of, of, of stuff that has changed and, uh, and I forgot to, to really acknowledge and celebrate just as you say. And, and then for many people, it's, it's so uh, extreme that they even forget that they've changed exactly. or they don't notice that the new them <laughs> is, is really different than they, they were a year ago. And then it's, it's very difficult to build your confidence Absolutely. and your, uh, and, and your uh, uh, trust uh, in your abilities even if you don't do this exactly what you said uh, uh, stop and take note and celebrate and also share as you said and I, I appreciate that you it's difficult for me sometimes to share these very odd things that I do and that happened to me so you challenged me and that's again a, a really good way of, of seeing how working together is sometimes and, and uh, being together talking uh, is sometimes so beneficial for our uh, process and for other people's process and this brings me to something really really wonderful that uh Yonit wrote in the chat i don't know if you've seen i'll translate because it's really a kind of celebration to hear that i think you are both uh, a really really good uh, wonderful team uh you complement each other in a wondrous way and i feel lucky to have studied in a course that the two of you uh, led together and I hope there will be more. Thank you Thank so you. much. <laughs> and it's a celebration to see people who, who, who learn from us and from others as well and make such good work with themselves afterwards and become our friends as well and colleagues, you know, little by little we all grow and yeah. help each other yeah. it's so cool um tammy says thank you very much it was really really interesting but i have to go now uh we all need to go now so Rivikal, thank you so much thank you uh, on that to everybody i hope it's a healthy happy peaceful inner peaceful and very expensive new year so much love and thank you Oh, that was such a joy. For me too. Thank you all. See you soon, next Monday, perhaps. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, Revital. Thank you. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. Thank you.